Stormy Daniels wrapped up two days on the stand, managing to turn a portion of defense cross-examination aimed at undermining her credibility into some embarrassing moments for the former president, at one point saying that if she were making up her story about sex with Donald Trump, quote, I would have written it to be a lot better. Today, also saw testimony from a Trump Organization bookkeeper about how closely he monitors the checks he writes, detailing the attention he paid to amounts considerably smaller than the $35,000 checks he wrote to, uh, to Michael Cohen. The day ended with Judge Juan Marchan rejecting another Trump motion for a mistrial and denying his request to modify the gag order he's under so he can talk about Stormy Daniels. And capping it all off, Stormy Daniels tweet this evening saying this about the former president, quote, real men respond to testimony by being sworn in and taking the stand in court. Oh, wait, never mind. Back with the panel, joining us, conservative lawyer George Conway, who was in court today. Um, what were your takeaways? My takeaway was that the continued cross-examination of Stormy Daniels was a complete disaster and a fiasco for the defense. I mean, uh, as... Because as it was Ellie, a rabbit hole they didn't need to go down? It just was just... It just went on and on, and didn't she, they didn't have anything on her. And you, you got to confine crosses to basically several, a, a few short lines of, of, of stuff that's good. They didn't do that. I think what happened was they had a day off, and Necklace is a very good lawyer by reputation. And I can, you can tell just by the way she conducted herself. She knows how to cross-examine a witness and knows how to ask questions. But she was, she's, her client is a narcissistic sociopath and who is obsessed with proving the lie that he didn't have anything to do with Stormy Daniels. And so they went off on this whole tangent on, basically it doesn't, it does, in, in a lot, it, the defense's position should be, it doesn't really matter whether that happened or not. Because even if it was extortion money, um, you know, it, it, even if it was extortion money, it still could be a crime, but he, we're trying to prove something that happened, didn't happen is just, it's just counterproductive. And, and it was, it just got to the point of ridiculousness where she's asking uh, uh, a Stormy about basically a map of South Lake Tahoe, Nevada to figure out whether or not she was walking in her heels one block or two and where she took a cab. It was just garbage. And it was embarrassing. And to the point where, you know, if you control the witness, you, by keeping your cross simple and short, you can control the witness. But the longer you go, the more the witness can pop off at you. And this woman is way smarter than Necklace's client. And she got some really good, I mean, I thought I saw jurors at some point trying to do what I was trying to do, which was suppress laughter. Um, at some of the at some of the shots that Stormy got into um, uh, got in into the record, it was just it was just a complete waste of time. The good news for the defense is that's not what this case is going to be about in the at the end of the day. The the the, 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 the <clears throat> process. I mean, the, the defense made the mistake also of putting this all into. They could have just stipulated to, that we're not going to contest what happened in, in in South Lake Tahoe. And we're just going to focus the jury in on the fact of whether or not there is proof that Donald Trump knew about the records um, that, that, that we claim were, that the, defense, that the prosecution claims were falsified. Now, let's leave apart the fact that he signed some of this stuff with a backup next to it, and, you know, with, and he carefully read it. It was $35,000 to his lawyer who hadn't really done that much for him. Let's leave that aside. That's what this issue, that, if he gets off, that's how he's going to get off. By, by leaving this issue open about what happened in that hotel room, they invited the prosecution to dump all this stuff in the record. Then they failed to object to a lot of some of the stuff that should have, they should have objected to, like the bit about you know, whether or not he wore a condom. I mean, the judge said today he, he didn't think that should have gone in, but there was no objection. Well, to the thing about the and, amount of money and what, how closely he pays attention to that, it didn't get anywhere near as much attention as the Stormy Daniels cross-examination. But Madeline Westerhout, who got on the stand and was the last witness today, and she'll be back on the stand tomorrow morning, she was Trump's gatekeeper inside the White House. And it basically was the liaison who was his executive assistant at Trump Organization, Trump Tower. They trained her of how to basically do that out of the White House. And there was one moment that the prosecution clearly brought up where there was an email between her and Rona Graff, Trump's assistant here in Trump Tower, about buying a frame a frame from Tiffany's next door because they didn't have any empty ones for a, a picture uh, of Trump's mother that they wanted to put. And Ronograph responded in the email and said, OK, but the frames are about $650 with a 10 percent discount. 
Can you check with him if that's how much he wants to spend? This is while Donald Trump is the president of the United States of America. And he was Rona, who knows him better than anyone, essentially, was still checking to see if that was too much money for him to spend on a frame and for her to expense it. And I think that is where we're going to see this go tomorrow, that they are trying to get to the fact that he was a penny pincher and he paid attention to where every cent went. And, and he paid this guy $35,000 a month, and he has a reputation around this town of stiffing law firms. Mm. Like, you, you could, you could, I mean, you could make a long list on Ellie's notepad there Even of all the, the law firms. I mean, the recording that Michael Cohen secretly taped of, of his client, uh, you know, Trump does sort of seem interested in the details of payments. I mean, he's talking about, you know, and, in cash. Can, yeah, can we do it in, in can, cash? Can we do it in cash? George, let me ask you th this question. Is, um, you know, it seems to me that there is a lot of evidence that Trump in general was very scrupulous about um, you know, how he was spending his money. And in general, looked at documents, um, you know, very carefully before he signed them. But there's not any evidence specifically that he looked at these documents. Do you think that's enough for a now, conviction? Well, I, I, I mean, there is evidence. He signed those checks with the backup. Okay. But that's not evidence. That's that, not, that, that's that, not that evidence. That is evidence. No, 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 no. That's documentary George, evidence. George, look, that is it's, evidence. Clear, it's clear how you feel about President Trump, okay? I, I don't have a feeling one way or the other. I'm, I'm looking sure at this is. as a trial attorney. Okay. And I'm looking at it as objectively as I can as a former prosecutor and yeah. as a current criminal defense attorney. What, there's a big difference. Yes, there's evidence that Donald Trump signed the checks. I've said that. Yeah. That's not the crime. I, there's, I, Caitlin, your point well, about- Two of the counts. Two of the counts no, no, your, the point, your, your point about the frame, it's clear that he watches his money. But that's not the crime. It's that second leap of- how does it then get written down back in New York City? Where is it listed? How is it listed? Is it listed as reimbursement to um, Michael Cohen? Or is it legal fee to Michael Cohen? There's been no proof whatsoever that Donald Trump had anything to do with how it's listed on the ledger in Trump Tower. Can I try, to, I can I try to frame this for a second? And I'll, I'll pose a question to you, George. If the prosecution stands up tomorrow and says, Your Honor, at this point, we can they possibly win? They would have to dismiss yeah, the case, they right? could Not necessarily. I mean, I think there's enough circumstantial evidence that they could infer it, but they need to put some more on. Right. I agree. So, no, the so, judge so, would order wait, a trial order so, dismissal. You know so, that. So, they, no, so it would be, I agree with Arthur. I think if the prosecution rested tomorrow, it doesn't go to the jury. So they need something from Michael Cohen, right? Yeah, they're going to need... What do you think they need from Michael Cohen? Basically, he's going to explain... What's the missing link that he needs to get? The meeting in the Oval Office in 2018 where they basically discussed how to do this. And I, I think, you know, and I think they're going to do a cross on Michael that is going to attempt to be brutal the way they attempted to brutalize Stormy Daniels today. And, um, you know, and a lot of people have low expectations for that. But the fact of the matter is... Given everything that they have pointed to so far, from the, the, the commencement of the hush, the, the, of the catch and kill scheme to the end, everything, yeah, everything. Your mic just fell off. My so mic just. Oh, okay. My, here, I'll here. hold it up. But basically, <laughs> what Michael has been is going to say has basically been pre-corroborated. So I, you know, it's going to be that, but it is going to be the key moment. I think that's exactly right, and that bridges the gap that I think we're seeing here, which is there has to be that last link, and Michael Cohen's going to say it's that meeting in the Oval Office in 2017. We're going to hear about They actually set the foundation for that today because the woman who testified had an email showing that this meeting was happening. doesn't tell us what's, what was said, but the jury knows that meeting happened, and Michael Cohen's but testimony about I that meeting is pivotal. Have, I'm sorry, go ahead. Can I yeah. ask a, this is going to be a dumb question, but the fact that these payments were split up over the course of a year, to me, seems like one of the most fishy elements of this whole scheme. Oh, yeah. If he were just going to reimburse Michael Cohen, he could have just written a check. The money was there. But the fact that they split it up, it seems to strongly suggest they were trying to make it seem like something that it was not, a retainer that was being paid over the course of a long period of time, right? right? And the gross up. Like well, yeah, I mean, I mean you know, regardless, it, it, of the, regardless of the amount, the means, yeah. to me, I think the prosecution hasn't explained this or, or touched on this, but that seems strongly suggestive of a scheme to make it seem like something that it was not. And that's exactly the point. It's not enough for the prosecution to show Donald Trump signed these checks. He knew they were intended to reimburse Michael Cohen for the hush money payments, they have to show that this was part of an effort to falsify, to falsely structure these, label these in the pull-down menu as lawyer fees, attorney fees, in order to cover up the fact that they were really but hush how money does, payments. But how does Michael Cohn help on that question? Yeah, well, look, at the end of the day, what's a reasonable doubt? A reasonable doubt has to be that there has to be some 
plausible alternative explanation for all these things that happened. And at the end of the day, I, it's going to be, I think it's going to be hard for the jury to believe that Donald Trump didn't know that these payments were for... The George, Trump. at the end of the day, yeah. an experienced lawyer of your magnitude, you know what you would say? If you were trying this case, you know what you would say to the jury? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you're one of the luckiest juries around because you got to meet Mr. Reasonable Doubt. You saw him walk in here, you saw him take this stand. If there's any human being on the planet Earth that should be, his picture should be next to the definition, Reasonable Doubt, it's Michael Cohen. And if you have Reasonable ah, no, no, Cohen, see, you, 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 you can cross-examine Michael Why? Cohen. Why? His They're history of being a liar, of being a fraud. I, he just as opposed to the defendants? He just, the, defendant, <laughs> the defendant's credibility, is, if, unless he takes the stand, is not on trial. It uh, is, because, it is because, because he's been you know, saying all sorts of stuff. No, no, no. They've the been showing him lying and lying and lying and lying and lying. No, no, it, no, it, it, but, but listen. No, no, no. But, but. It is all about Michael Cohen just, Abby, you asked me a question. Why? Within two months ago, he got in trouble, Michael Cohen, for submitting fake cases there, to a I judge have, when he asked his probation. So he on. lied to a federal Show judge two something. months ago. Show us something that you? he lied about that has something to do with what he's saying I mean, on the It stand. all goes to credibility. They're going to uh, destroy his credibility. They're not going to uh, destroy his credibility.